Hi, welcome to this brief presentation of hydrodynamics, calculation of added mass and complex objects. I would like to express my gratitude towards Knut Wojtsetter, who is my supervisor, and Sondre Luke Helgesen, CEO of Stressman Engineering. Motivation and summary. Added mass is a complex phenomenon that is poorly understood in the industry, and there are no easy ways of determining added mass for complex objects. The most traditional and correct estimations are done through experimental procedures, which are quite expensive to set up and not commonly used. The present work started with a literature study on hydrodynamics to gain knowledge of the different hydrodynamic effects. The study included general added mass formulation, simplifications of the added mass matrix, loads acting on objects both near and far away from a free surface, and some common estimation techniques. Introduction to added mass. Added mass can be regarded as uh, some additional inertia and object experiences as it is forced to accelerate through a fluid. It is related to the kinetic energy required to continuously displace the fluid during an accelerated motion. And it is directly proportional to the acceleration of the object which means that you can use uh, Newton's second law of motion to model the forces. How to de determine other mass in today's industry? Today's industry generally relies on hand calculations provided by DNB and other authorities, which are based on simple geometries. The hand calculations do not account for flow interaction, from the different components uh, when you're dealing with an assembled construction, which means that you typically don't get the right answer you're looking for. So in turn, this means that your structure will not be optimized for its application as you might get highly conservative or liberal results from your calculations. Analysis setup. The CFD analyses are performed using OpenFoam, which is an open source CFD software. The turbulence flow characteristics are evaluated with RANS turbulence modeling using the K-Omega SST turbulence model, which inherits the best features of the standard K-Epsilon and K-Omega models. Two geometries are analyzed. One simple 3D cylinder, which is used to verify the methodology, and one cylindrical frame. The 3D cylinder analysis is easily verified with DNV since theoretical data is well established. Two configurations of the complex geometry are investigated, which are shown in the pictures on the screen, where the purpose is to demonstrate the effect of cylinder spacing when comparing the results to DNV. CFD results the submerged cylinder. The results for the submerged cylinder correspond well with the theoretical data from DMV with an error of less than 3%, which you can see from the table provided here. CFD results, the cylindrical frame. The cylindrical frame, on the other hand, does not comply well with hand calculations from DMV. The CFD results are compared with two methods in accordance with DMV. One, calculating the atom mass for each cylinder to get the total contribution and two, approximating the cylindrical frame as a perforated plate. The second configuration shows better compliance with the first method, but the deviations are still quite large. In conclusion, hand calculations are not suited for calculating added mass and complex objects. The numerical results should still, however, be verified with experimental procedures to benchmark the analysis model. <laughs> 